Hey everybody, Justice Good here. Recently I was looking through the App Store and I was looking through the Photography App section looking for anything cool or new. And I found this app called ArcFrame by developer Dongwook Cho. And it lets you create these twisted arc shaped frame photos. So I thought I'd try to remake it in Photoshop. And here's what I came up with. So I'm going to walk you through how to make one of your own. So let's go to File, New, and let's use 612 by 612 for the width and height. Realistically, any square photo will work if you want to make it larger. So, now the first thing we want to do is head over to View and make sure rulers are turned on. Now click on your left ruler and drag it out to the middle, and you should create a guide. Make sure it snaps to the middle of your photo. You should physically feel it snap to the middle and it won't let you budge it for a little bit. So now we've intersected our photo into four sections so we can see exactly where the middle is. Now grab your re rounded rectangle tool by holding onto your shapes menu until it pops up. And for the radius, we're going to use 25px, which is pixels. Make sure it's set to shape layers and not any of the other options. And under the settings here you just want to keep it just uncheck everything except unconstrained it should be like that at default so now click and drag while holding shift from the top left to the bottom right corner and don't worry if it's not perfectly in the center because now if we grab our pointer tool and move the image to align with the guides you should feel it snap to exactly the middle so now once we have it completely in the middle, we can get rid of these guides so we don't have to look at them. So go to view and turn extras off, which is command H shortcut on the Mac and command R to turn rulers off on the Mac. Next, we want to fill our background with a more of a sandstone type of unique pattern. So go to layer, new fill layer, solid color. Here we're gonna use a very light tan you can use any color you want in reality but if you want to just follow along with the way I'm doing it the color code that I used was D9C58A so go ahead and select OK and then right click on that color fill layer and select blending options here you want to turn pattern overlay on to add a little bit of texture so click this drop down menu click this side arrow and select artist surfaces once you open this menu select the second texture which is called stone and under the blend mode set it to overlay you should see the effect that this has it gives your picture a more of a sandstone texture on the border once you're satisfied with what your border looks like you want to right click on your shape layer and rasterize the layer so we can begin slicing it up. So let's grab our pen tool and make sure it's set to paths and not any of the other options. And you want to make your first mark here, just a couple points away from the bottom left corner. And it should intersect with the middle of the rounded edge. And make your second point in the middle. While holding shift, drag it out to the right. So as you can see, we have a curve that intersects through the rounded edge of the square. Now on the top right, a couple inches away from the left, you're going to do the same thing, and while holding shift, drag your pen tool up. Go ahead and make any marks to complete the square, right click, and make it a selection. Now that you have your selection, head over to your rectangular marquee tool, right click, and layer via cut. Now we've successfully split our picture into two different sections. And here we can split it one more time to create four. So grab your pen tool again, make sure it's set to pads, and this time make your point there on the left side. In the middle, drag down while holding shift. If you want, you don't have to hold shift, you can use any custom amount and then on the right a couple of inches above the edge. This way the lines intersect through the rounded edges. 
Again, finish off your path, right click, make selection, and select OK. But this time, instead of just cutting the layer, you want to select your rectangular marquee tool, right click, and save the selection. You can call it whatever you want, but what this does is allows us to use this selection on both of the two new layers that we made. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. So now select either of the layers, right click, layer via cut, and as you can see, our selection disappears, which is why we saved it. So right click and choose load selection. And under the channel, if you click it and drop down, you should see the layer that you made. So there you go, it loads your selection for you again. So this time you can use it on the unsliced layer and layer via cut. Now you successfully have cut your picture into four different curvy areas. And now we can begin dragging in our photos. As you can see, I've already selected four photos to use and you can use any four photos that you want. So let's just drag it into our document and it should come in as a smart object, which means it generally resizes it to the size of your canvas. Now position it on top of the first layer and we want to go to edit, transform, and scale it so that it covers the whole area of our shape. As you can see we don't want any of the black underneath to show. Now hit enter once you're satisfied and go to layer create clipping mask. That attaches it to your shape and you can move it around however you like now. The shortcut for that is option command G and the shortcut for transform is command T. I will be using the shortcuts from now on just to save time but if you ever want to find them you can see where they are. Now let's drag our second photo that we want to use all right, and position it on top of our second shape layer. I use the shortcut option command G to create the clipping mask and transform it to where I like. And just continue this process, selecting each photo above each layer and creating the clipping mask and making sure to transform the photo so that it covers the entire shape. So let's drag this picture up, create the clipping mask, as you can see, we're going to have to transform this one first, so Command-T and size it up a little bit, and create the clipping mask, and we have four different photos. But now we want to create a nice border that separates all four of these. So right-click on one of your shape layers, and select Blending Options. Now check mark Stroke on. Here's where you can customize any color you want. I would typically just recommend using a, a solid white, but if you want to get creative, you can use any color you want. As for the position, select center and the size, I'm going to use 6 pixels. The bigger the size, the thicker the stroke. Now right click on your layer, head over to copy layer style. Now you can select each of your shapes, right click, paste layer style, right click, paste layer style, and right click, paste layer style. So now we have connected all four of these strokes and we have the final completed image. There's a lot of options of customization that you can do. You can just do three slices if you don't want to do all four. You can do different curvy slices and make it go any which way you want. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.